Welcome back. Now the president plans to build consensus at the Central Executive Committee meeting, which is currently underway at State House Nakasero. Key on the agenda is how to push through the amendment to appoint the Secretary General, which has been perceived as an attempt to ink the current Secretary General's political obituary. That is the talk of the nation tonight, and I'm joined by Makere University Law Don, Dr. Msinja Kabumba, for this discussion. Good evening, Dr. Absinje. Good evening. It's good to see you again on Talk of the Nation. Pleasure. We'll get right into the discussion. First, there was the cabinet reshuffle, targeting one politician. Mm. The next, we're talking about a possibility of constitutional amendments, which are aimed at the same man. Mm. Does Amama Mbabazi really deserve to be thrown to the wolves? I think it's a political contest, but I think for me, importantly, it, it exposes the soft underbelly of our constitutionalism or lack thereof. Uh, the idea that you have rules being changed willy-nilly to suit a particular political agenda, I think, um, doesn't bode well for our democracy. And it, I think, actually, it's, it, it, it goes against the spirit of the current constitutional framework. The, mm. the idea of changing the Secretary General position in the party would be against Article 71 of the Constitution that says that requires all political parties to have a national character and also have certain democratic ethos, and particularly for national guns to be elected regularly but undemocratically, which is actually has been brought by our neighbors in Kenya in the Article 91 of their constitution where they have the same provision borrowing from us. And so I think it's a step backwards for us. Do you think this can be legally, this process can be legally sustained if Mama Mbabazi feels aggrieved? Precisely, because it, it, it's against the clear statement of the constitution. But uh, I think as you rightly pointed out, the, the challenge is that the constitution also is subject to amendment at the moment and has been made in the past to make way, way for political expediency. So you don't have the Constitution as a sacred document that binds us. Um, I've argued before that in actual fact you have the Constitution which is subservient to the political actors. It can be changed whenever certain actors want it to change. It can be interpreted the way certain political actors want it to be interpreted. And in reality you don't have governance by the Constitution as such. You have a military governance that is dressed up in civilian clothes. Is there anything we can do as a country to avoid the impact of what this is likely to cause? I think the damage has been done over such a long period of time <coughs> that the correcting that damage will take a similar, if not a longer amount of time. Um, as a country, I think right now almost all the keys are held by those who have captured the political process, really ca captured it. And I think the way forward is for those actors who have captured the state to start to take steps to sort of um, realize the danger that we all face from that situation. It's not sustainable. It puts all of us at peril. You can't maintain such a dominance of or the closing out of civic space, allowing others to contest. If you close all those avenues, you leave but other unpalatable means of change, which, which I think all of us have had enough of and would like to avoid. So I think it's for those who could change things to listen before it's too late. And there, I mean, there are those who have prophesied doom, um, mm. <coughs> that perhaps the December 15th delegates conference could spark disintegration mm. in the party. Mm. Is this a far-fetched, is this far-fetched, especially in the context of these undercurrents? Well, for me, even if December 15th doesn't split the party, I think, broadly speaking, it just, it's a further nail in the coffin of democracy in our country. And what that means for those watching, I think the signal it will send is that it's really impossible to change, whether from outside as best you tried or, or from, from inside. Now, if that signal is sent, I think it then it may cause people to become desperate. And I think desperate people um, are, are often compelled to do things that are neither for in their best interest or the interest of the nation, I think, broadly speaking. So I think it's not so much what will happen in the NRM. I think it's about the message that is sent, the message of impunity, the message of um, the futility of democratic change, and ultimately the futility of peaceful transition. Let's uh, look at a slight, slightly different thing. We, mm. we have seen a display of might ahead mm. of the delegates' conference. Mm. Is this, and I'm just going to ask this question yes. blatantly. Please. Do you think this is supposed to serve as a 
subtle message mm. to Mbamazi, maybe not so subtle, subtle mm. message to Mbamazi that those mm. holding the levers of power, mm. especially the police and army, are mm. backing the president. I think, I think having occupied the positions he has, I think he's under no illusions whatsoever as to the structure of our, of our governance. If he was, then I think he would be extremely naive. Um, but be that as it may, I, I don't think it's as much a message to him because I, I suspect he knows this, or he should know this. I think it's more a message to those who might support him, or those who are minded to go his way, or people also inside who are also minded to, you know, to do the queue or try to enforce their, their rights, their... So this is probably not really about Mbaba So it anyway. might be a message to Mbaba <laughs> you know, Mbaba Anyone like Mbaba Exactly. But, but I think for me, it, it, it's still a dangerous message and still bodes very badly. I think it, it's just an extension of this whole idea of militarism. Um, the idea of the military being the way political questions are sorted out, the civilian authorities being subservient to the military, which then invites or leads to the assumption that there is no possibility for peaceful transition. And, uh, and, and the implications of that, I think, are terrible are dangerous for us all, those who, who do it and those of us who are subject to it. I, I believe that in, in certain respects, Mbabazi has mm. shown that he's not going to be mm. a pushover, mm. per se. And mm. we know that the president has, you know, when he's walking a tight yeah. rope, he, he tends mm. to rely mm. on the sleigh of a hand mm. to edge his rivals. Mm. How can he marshal support against Mbabazi? Well, I think um, the job is very easy because it's 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 the carrot and the stick, and and uh, and so far the NRM has both, the stick in the sense of the military and the police, and, and I think all you guys have seen this being deployed in a very partisan manner for a very long time. So that's the stick. Then you have the carrot, which is our money or the taxpayers' money, which is uh, doled out in various shapes, in various using various ruses, um, whether it's envelopes to uh, religious leaders or schools or people who have danced well, or the youth in a sack, or any sort of creation of districts, the whole forms of patronage that have come to um, characterize our state. So I, I think all the cards are in the hands of the, those who have really captured the state. And, and, and I think it's time really for honesty, um, honesty in our dialogue. Because one could say that this is politics as usual, or that objectivity would require that to lay well, you know. But I think at some point, there's a duty upon us all to say it as it is. There's just, um, there comes a time when you have to admit that all is not well, and that's put it very mildly, that things are going down a certain path from which there may be no return. And it's not really a question about whether one is FDC, UPC, NRM, DP, whatever that is. It's a question, I think, of the citizenship of Uganda, our common heritage, our shared identity and vision, which is imperiled at the moment. And I think a duty upon all of us to try to reclaim it peacefully. Through, and it starts by a recognition, even on the part of those who are doing what they're doing now, from mm -hmm. inside there. And I think Baba is a very good example. He's a gentleman who shepherded the passage of the Public Order Management Act, the Interceptions of Communications Act, and now, as I think of you so recently, he's becoming the first victim almost like, I think, a rehash of, Ibi, of Ibingira's situation when he shepherded the same detention laws and then was the first victim. History of Uganda and elsewhere is replete with examples of individuals who kept silent while they were in the system. And then, until it was too late and the system swallowed them. I think time, the time has come for Ugandans, in and out of the state, of the government, to realize that a certain line is being, we're reaching a certain line, Mm -hmm. and increasingly crossing that line from which there may not be any return. I think like you rightly say, it is time that all of us collectively said it cannot be politics as yeah. usual. And this mm -hmm. is a perfect note to end this discussion as our time is first spent. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us in Talk of the Nation tonight. Pleasure. That is Makere University Law Dawn Dr. Wisinja Kabumba joining us on Talk of the Nation tonight. We will take another short break and return with the latest in TV Weekend Sport.